This is where we begin to see the differences in uh, organization between Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Right? So Mark introduces us to parables in chapter 4. The first, very first one is this parable of the sower. Uh, what is interesting is this very first parable, this parable of the sower, at least as far as I can tell, ends up being the first parable in all of the Gospels. So when Matthew 13 starts talking about the parables, this is the first one he addresses. When Luke starts dealing with parables, this is the first one that he addresses. So for whatever reason, this seems to have arisen as this is one of Christ's first parables. Uh, what, what you can also see is all three of these, whether it's Matthew 13 or here in Mark 4 or Luke 8, chapter 8, Christ begins to give his explanation as to why he do, uses parables. And we can talk about what the, the, the genre of a parable is, right, the form of a parable. But what he does in all three of them is it seems to be connected back to Isaiah chapter 6, when Isaiah receives his call and says, your job is to make those that hear so that they can't hear, make those that see. It sounds confusing, but, but that's what you see, for instance, in chapter 4, uh, what is it, verse 12, that seeing they may see and not perceive. And hearing they may not they may hear and not understand. That that's language that's coming out of Isaiah six, to the call of Isaiah. And so whatever we want to say about a parable, what also seems clear is that the this early Christian community understood parables to be based from this Isaiah six instruction that was given. Mm -hmm.